بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله continuing on in our discussion about salafia and why salafia is the منهج رباني meaning as a minhaj it doesn't mean individuals on the salafi dawa are ma'soom so we have to understand that and that goes for even our ulama and the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said kullu ibn adam khatta wa khayran khatai wa khayran khatayin tawabun all the children of adam make mistakes they all make sins but the best of those who make sins are those who repent so it shows us habat fi llah that no one is to be blindly followed in all matters or to the extent that you have the ability and the tools to be able to distinguish between the haq and the batil because you will find as you gain more knowledge and you read from the books of the ulama and you'll see that the, some of the greatest scholars in Islam made mistakes they had mistakes in ijtihad some of them made mistakes in even in aqida yes they made mistakes in aqida and with that being the case ahl sunnah's position is that not to rush to take them off the minhaj not to rush to take them out of the fold of ahl sunnah wal jamaah and so this is why it's very important for us to have some understanding at least some general principles because there's so many detailed masail but just to have some general idea so that way we're not blowing with the wind every time there's a new fitna we blow to the left we blow to the right until we're just blown away out of islam or blown away off the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because we're so discouraged by all the ikhtilaf and there's going to be there is now and it's going to continue when we look at some of the statements that some of the scholars are saying some very strong statements against their brothers on the minhaj you you can't be pleased with that you can't your heart cannot be filled with joy and some of those statements have mubalagha they're extreme or they're going beyond the bounds and this is why it's very important habib to fillah to really sincerely and this is why i'm sincerely uh offering this advice just seek knowledge keep your head down and strive your best to be out of the fitna so going back to what we said we mentioned the hadith of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is the ruwaya uh, it, that's in in, in bukhari and muslim and this is uh, the one on uh, an muawiyah radiyallahu ta'ala an qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam la tazal taifatun min ummati qa'imu qa'ima qa'imatun bi amri llah la yadhurhum min khadlahum wala min khalafuhum hatta ya'ti amr llah wa hum zahirun ala an-nas the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said as reported by muawiyah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in sahabat rasul sahabat kiram radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in he said that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said there won't cease to be a group from my nation that continues to be on the haq so when you see for example if you're in a place where there's very few people that are necessarily adhering to the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and i gave an example uh the other day when i i said you know here uh, right now i'm in ethiopia and i was praying in the masjid the masjid that i prayed in last night actually uh for salat al-isha and maghrib most of the people in there are sufi and the imam is not and so you see all kind of bid'ah that you would be so surprised to find in mostly in the west uh and and in other places in the world but you 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 see that and so you see the importance that sometimes you're in a locality and there may not be that many people on the same methodology that are in the minhaj nabuwa that they're on the minhaj of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam instead they want to make excuses for every kind of bid'ah until it reaches shirk wallahu musta'an so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there won't cease to be a group from my nation that is establishing the amr allah establishing kitab allah wa sunnat rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam establishing jihad fi sabil allah establishing uh, ilm wa fiqh qa'ima bi amr allah la yadhurhum no one will harm them man khadlahum whoever uh, deceives them or goes against them wala man khalafu or or those who go against them until the uh, the command of allah is established or the hour is established and they 
will be, uh, you know, superior over the people or they will be present amongst the people. So what we gain from this is we know that Ahl al-Sunnati wal Jama'ah, Mawjood, they're present. And they're present around the world and they're not present, it's not in a particular place. We don't say it's Saudi Arabia, la. We don't say it's Yemen, la. We don't say it's Egypt, la. We don't say it's Tunisia, we don't say it's Seattle, Washington, la. We say that there's people from Ahl Sunnah around the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided people who should love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of their adherence to the Sunnah to the Sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. What we mean by this is we mean by it's that it's a tariqah of guidance. It's a way of guidance that uh, when, we're, when we're talking about the sunnah. <coughs> and this is what the Prophet wasallam and his sahaba were upon, as we mentioned in the other hadith. Uh, and this is all before bid'ah came into existence in the religion and the various ideologies before the Ashari creed, before the Khawarij and the Shia and the Qadariya and the Murjia and all of these sects that appeared that and all these ideologies, these later ideologies appeared and bid'ah that people adhered to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they were known as Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Sunnah they're known as Ahl Sunnah because لِأَنَّهُمْ مُتَمَسِّكُونَ بِهَا دَاعُونَ لَهَا because they are those who adhere to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they call to it they don't call to themselves they don't say yeah it's, it's about me you know, you better take what I said. No, they have to be open to correction. No, they have to be humble. No, they have to know that they make mistakes in, on, on this path. But Ahl Sunnah, as a group, as the safe sect, that they adhere to that which is infallible, which is the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Message of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Jama'ah refers to the Salaf. The Salaf of this Ummah from the, the, the Sahaba, Radiallahu Ta'ala, Majma'een, Wa Tabi'een, Rahimahumullah, Wa Itba'a Tabi'een, and those who follow them, Bi Ahsan. They all make up the Salafi'een, and they all make up Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And that means that they adhere, that they come together on the Book of Allah, the Almighty, and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they do not divide the Jama'ah similar to the other misguided groups, such as the Jahmiyyah, the Ruwafid, the Qadariyya, the Khawarij, the Murjiyah, and other groups, and some of those contemporary sects. Because in fact, Diobandi, for example, they're contemporary. Naqshbandi, these are not old sects. You know, they, they may have a few hundred years, something like this, but they, they don't go back a thousand years even. But they take little bits and pieces of bid'ah from some of the early groups, and they combine it to make their new uh, group and refer to themselves as Neo Bundy or uh, Dio Bundy uh, or uh, Dio Bundy or Naqshbandi Tariqa or Shitshani Tariqa or this Tariqa or that Tariqa. Ahl Sunnah, that if they have a division, that they for Allahi wa Rasuli in Kuntum Tu'minu Billahi wa Yom Al Akhir. Ahl Sunnah will Jama'ah. That when they differ, and they don't differ over aqidah, but it's usually over furur, over masail uh, that are subsidiary masail. It could be masail and fiqh, or masail that are branching off detailed, intricate matters in aqidah, or in matters of making a judgment on someone, whether he's a mubtidiya or not, whether he's a kafir or not, uh, things like this that. Generally, you don't have that the scholars of Ahl Sunnah uh, differ, and that that difference leads to them making tabdi of one another. And this is what you see as a difference between some of the contemporary scholars compared to the Salaf of this Ummah and, and much of Islamic history, is you find that the ulama. A lot of them in the past, and even some of the recent past, and I'll tell you, Imam, that's why I say to you, 
definitely read the books of Imam Muqbal if you have Arabic and whatever it's translated. Read the books of Bin Uthameen, so many are translated. Read and understand and look at his, how he, his asloob and dealing with differences. Look at uh, Imam Bin Baz. Look at Imam Al-Albani. If you stick with those four giants and even and in this time, Imam Sheikh Saleh bin Fuzan and Imam uh, Abdul Masih al Abad, you'll see, subhanAllah, how they, uh, they're, they're, they're uh, resistant to quickly take someone off the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They give uh, uh, chances and you don't see them dealing and talking about those controversial topics all the time and, and bombarding the people and testing the people and, and forcing the people to take a position. And this is very important. So this is my sincere advice. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Adin al nasiha He said, uh, the, the, the religion is sincere advice. So from sincere advice, stick. That doesn't mean we belittle our other ulama, but we put a lot of those other ulama, their statements on the scale of these imams, because these imams, we know and we see how we can put their scale clearly on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the tariqah salaf salih that you can see the, the, the relationship there where sometimes you see from some younger scholars that we see that are bi'idnillah salafi but you see that sometimes they make more mistakes and they make sometimes new principles. Sometimes they make mistakes and say, this is a qaida, this is a principle, this is a principle. And we don't see delil for that. And we find many things that contradict what they're saying from imams, even some of their own scholars. So this is why I say to you, Habatifillah, stick with those giants and you will really have uh, a lot more success. And stick to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that which is uh, backed up by uh, Adillah. And the last thing I want to mention is that when we talk about the Salafi Minhaj, we're talking about Islam in general. That means everything from its ahkam, from its rulings, from its adab, from its manners, from its uh, akhlaq, the, um, the, the, uh, the, the way we deal with one another. It's aqidah. We're talking about the aqid of Ahlul Sunnah. And the menhaj, the methodology of da'wah, the methodology of presenting Islam, the methodology of, you know, of how we understand Islam, the tariqah, you know, how literal are we? Are we using our intellect to precede uh, the nasus? All of this comes down to menhaj and it comes and it's complete. The, the religion is complete. And this is why Ahlul Sunnah has a complete package, a complete methodology. And their methodology is backed up by the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu udkhulu fi silmi kafa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 208, O you who believe, enter into Islam completely. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from kufr, shirk, and nifaq, protect us from hizbiya, and anything that I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal, anything I said that was incorrect was surely from myself. Wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyya Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.